Star Wars Rogue One had one of the most impressive space battles in Star Wars movie history. It also had the second largest rebel fleet we've seen assembled for battle in one place. But I know I have been wondering, and I know many people as well were wondering, whether this fleet at Scarif was the entirety of the rebel forces. In other words, was this just one of their many fleets? Was this their whole fleet? Was this half of their fleet? What, what's going on here? Well, lucky for us, we actually got an answer to this question from Pablo Hidalgo, who manages the story of the Star Wars universe. As a bit of context in the most recent episode of Rebels, so that's season 3, episode 18, Mon Mothma makes a speech to several small rebel groups, hoping to unite them all as one alliance to fight the Empire. Anyway, the speech is extremely successful, and many of the cells join together to form a large fleet. One thing you'll really notice about this fleet right away is that it bears some striking similarities to the one at Scarif. And most noticeably uh, is the presence of the hammerhead frigates, which have a very unique design and which are able to be spotted pretty easily. Both fleets actually also have a large number of Nebulon B frigates, GR-75 transport ships, and heavy modified CR-90 corvettes. And the producer for the episode actually said that this composition of the fleet wasn't unintentional in that he actually aimed to have the fleet resemble what the fleet in Scarif looked like. In the most recent episode of Rebels Recon, which is an official Star Wars YouTube series, Pablo actually confirmed that the fleet at Scarif was pretty much everything the Rebels were able to muster. If it could fly and shoot, he basically says, it was there. He also mentions that some ships were being retrofitted or made battle ready at the time of Rogue One and couldn't quite make it to the Battle of Scarif. And that makes sense because in the Rebels clip you see an MC-80 Home One type star cruiser as well as some sort of carrier that weren't in the movie. The fact that they committed their entire forces to this one battle is pretty interesting to me, and it really shows how high the stakes were in Rogue One. It also makes the destruction of the MC-75 capital ship a little sad, because that was really the Rebels' only capital ship at that time, so it was a devastating blow. All in all, at Scarif, the fleet really does take some knocks, and that kind of does explain why in Episode 4, it's really only X-Wings that attack the Death Star along with, of course, the fact that capital ships couldn't really do much to the battle station. It also kind of makes me wonder how the Rebels managed to field such a large fleet in Episode 6. I'd really be interested, actually, in reading a book or maybe a comic about the efforts of the Rebel Alliance to get a second fleet ready in time for the, uh, the Battle of the Second Death Star. Obviously, a lot of this came from the Mon Calamari, and they definitely have some pretty impressive production abilities, but they probably had to make some deals with other star systems in order to get the rest of what they fielded. And this would have been ongoing because they definitely needed ships for other engagements before and after the Battle of the First Death Star up until the Battle of the Second Death Star too. Anyways guys, I hope that you found this interesting, that it answered maybe some questions that you would have had after watching Rogue One. If you have any other questions that you want me to look into, please post in the comments down below and I will look into them for you and I will try to find an answer. Today's comment of the day comes from Ron Corless, who pretty accurately describes why the unknown regions are so fascinating and wonders what we can expect in the new trilogy. So that's on the unknown regions video where I talk about Snoke's connection to the unknown region. So check that out. Respond to his comment and check his page out guys. Anyway, this has been Eckhart's Letter. Thank you so, so much for watching. I love you all. May the force be with you.